Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we shall discuss what are the factors which we should consider before matching two horoscopes for marriage compatibility. So this is for those people who are in a situation of you know, arranged marriage, uh, the traditional setting in the Vedic culture, where uh, you have met the person once, or maybe you have not met the person, or once, twice, thrice. And after meeting, uh, depending on if you like the person or not, then you got to decide, uh, will you marry this person or not? All right, so you do not know this person fully, you have not stayed with this person, you have not met this person much. So how do you decide? Should you uh, go for a horoscope compatibility matching or not? Because uh, in that setting, arranged marriage setting, it's very important that you do that because uh, only then you can know to what extent uh, there, there could be a good relationship. But there are so many things which you should do before that. Because if you don't do this and jump to horoscope matching, this 36 out of 36 point matching system, then you will end up in a disaster. I'm telling you. Yes, I'm not creating fear, but I'm warning you. If you don't do all this and then you directly jump, you might end up in a disaster. Your marriage might end up in a disaster. All right. And this is purely from an astrological perspective, which you should do, which you should take care of, or tell your astrologer to do. I mean, you should not dictate like that, that do this, do that. But at least you can uh, get an idea from your astrologer uh, regarding these points. Okay. So there you go. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to the website down in the description section of my videos. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you shall find him. And before I begin, as you know, in India, there was this, uh, it's still going on in, in fact, the Janta curfew and at 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time, we were supposed to uh, ring bells or uh, make some sound by which we were uh, supposed to express our gratitude to the doctors and all the other people who have been assisting the assisting humanity for battling with this coronavirus so i do not have a bell but i have a small bell here so i will also ring it and i hope you have also done it and by doing this i would like to thank each one of you who have been serving humanity tirelessly without thinking of your own sleep, your own family, your own health. And uh, you have given us a faith that, yes, um, things can get better if we are together, right? So that is my personal request to everybody who is watching this video. If you know some doctor who is helping others, uh, uh, to who is helping others, or coronavirus patients, or even helping other, to test other patient, people to check if they have corona or not, then to whatever extent possible from your side, please uh, help them, all right, either financially or by giving them food or by giving them any kind of help which you can do from your side. All right, so there you go, compatibility matching, all right. So let's talk of a scenario. Imagine you are sitting in a room and imagine you are a man or oh, imagine you are a woman and then one person comes to the room. You know, one man comes to the room and let's assume that you both uh, <coughs> uh, might get married. I mean, you are strangers. You don't know each other. All right. There's a man and a woman in a room and then imagine uh, in a fancy world that there is a task of making a cake. So then the man comes and he brings all this flour and butter and cocoa powder and all these fancy stuff. And then he and this lady together starts making these things and then they start baking the cake in the oven. Now imagine you have a very good time. You have a great time. You like each other very much and you have a great rapport, great compatibility. Okay. And then you decide, uh, let's assume the lady decides uh, uh, during this time that, uh, okay, 
he seems to be nice uh, maybe i can marry him let's assume she decides like this but let's assume the moment uh, they separate they leave the respective uh, they leave that room and then suddenly you come to know that this person who came to meet you he is he's a murderer or he's a cheater he's a liar or he has deceived a lot of people well then what will this lady decide will she decide uh, to go and marry this person well definitely not because there is a fundamental problem in the person so therefore the thrust of this video is either it's a man or a woman you must be able to identify certain fundamental factors which are very crucial for marriage which has nothing to do with compatibility those factors will not change depending on the other person so for example if a person has these factors or doesn't have that cannot improve or degrade uh, depending on who he or she marries all right so therefore it's very crucial that you check these factors and again as i said if you don't do this then what will happen the many people who tell me that we did compatibility matching before marriage and now our marriage is ending in a divorce how in the universe is this happening astrology is fake it's false the astrologers are liars they are cheaters they are bluffers they are just ruining our lives no it's not like that there are many things which you need to do before so what is the first thing that you need to do astrologically the first thing you need to do is uh, and yeah disclaimer there will be lot of strong things which i will tell in this video so beware all right the first thing that you need to do is check uh the strength of the ascendant of that person the other person okay uh what what how strong is the ascendant i have made many videos on uh factors to judge the ascendant so please uh go and watch that video all right so if you watch the ascendant then uh you will know um uh, to what extent is the person focused in life if the ascendant is good then the person is focused the person is by nature very positive If the ascendant is not good the person doesn't lack the person lacks focus so then he will all he or she will also lack focus in marriage all right ascendant doesn't show body or career or marriage it shows everything remember that the second thing you must check is what about his son because son is uh, if if it's a man then also you must check the son even if it's a woman you must check the son okay son also shows a uh, stability and discipline commitment these are the things which the son shows so if you see that the ascendant or the son is not very good then uh, you 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 might have to do uh, you might have to reconsider your decision of marrying that person then what is the next thing you must check the moon because the moon will tell you to what extent the see moon is a very beautiful planet it moon shows reciprocation basically why because what does the moon do moon takes the light from the sun and gives it to others okay so therefore the moon is very important why uh, the sun is very important because that shows to what extent to what extent can the person give because if if the sun is not good in somebody's chart that person cannot give to others give all right the person only wants to take because the person because the sun has light and heat so the sun shows sustenance if the person doesn't have a good sun then it could happen that the person is not able to sustain things in life get get along carry on things in life all right and that will also reflect in the marriage don't think sun only shows money or career no 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 never do that mistake then let's come to the moon third factor the moon is also very crucial the moon is a very beautiful planet as i said it reflects the light it doesn't keep anything so the sun will tell you to what extent can the person give and the and moon will tell you to what extent can the person reflect reflect means uh, like you know relationship is a healthy balance between two people like it's it's a give and take you give me something i also give you something you nourish me i nourish you so that or uh, you can nourish me back <laughs> that's relationship that's libra business it's seventh house yes relationships are uh, they are they are like business uh, that that's how relationships are the venusian relationships not jupiterian relationships okay 
But let's consider the modern uh, mundane materialistic scenario. It's fully based on give and take. So the moon will tell you to what extent can the person reflect back love. All right, that's very important because if the moon is not good, then you will feel that you are always doing things in the relationship. You are making more effort and the person is not reciprocating. Why? Because the moon reflects the light. And if the moon is not good, then uh, the person will not be able to reflect. The person cannot reciprocate love. All right. Now, of course, when I say moon, uh, difficult moon, I don't mean to say that if moon is in debility or it's with Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, you have to judge the moon overall. You have to judge the fourth house also. All right. Therefore, these things are very crucial. So don't just jump into conclusion. Don't write below in the comments that you are speaking nonsense. My moon is in Scorpio. I always reflect light. All right. There are a thousand things which you need to check to uh, see how the moon is. See which planet is in the sign of cancer. That will also reflect the color of the moon. See which planets are aspecting cancer or the moon. They will also color. Right? How is the moon? Is it afflicted? Is it in debility? It is exalted or it's in multicorn. It's in a water sign. It's in a ardi sign or it's in a airy sign. Is it in a Kendra or a Trikon or is it in a Dustana? Is it with the lords of the Kendras or Trikonas? Well placed. All right. Is it with the Ascended Lord? You must check all these and only then you should decide the strength of the moon. So uh, don't write fancy statements like, oh, my moon is in Scorpio. I'm not like this. All right. That's sheer nonsense. If you think that just by the sign placement, you decide the strength of a planet, you don't know anything about astrology. All right. Then what is the next thing that you should uh, you should see? This is very crucial, very 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 crucial. You must check the fourth house, which I mentioned earlier. Also, the fourth house will tell you the fourth lord, the fourth house, fourth lord will tell you to what extent can the person be happy in life. I made a video on secrets of the fourth house. If you remember, if you would have watched that video, if you have not watched, then watch it. You will get more idea on that. The fourth house tells you how you absorb things in life. What is your default setting? What is your default outlook to life? Because the 10th house is the house where the sun is uh, at the noon. It's like mid heaven. It's the peak of the sky. But then fourth house is opposite. Fourth house shows when things are not going the way you want. Sun 10th house means everything is going your way. It's like that. You know, the light is fully there. But suppose, uh, let's assume, uh, what happens to the sun when it, it's in midnight? It, it almost as if it has disappeared. It is almost like that. So, so when things don't go your way, the way you want, how do you react? How much mental stability do you have? How much, how much emotional stress, emotional pain or emotional, uh, I won't say pain, but how much uh, flu emotional fluctuations can you handle? Because uh, every time the relationship will not be good. Sometimes you might have to stay separate because of career issues. Sometimes you may fight, you may quarrel, you may not talk to each other. So that, that, that will create emotional stress. To what extent can you handle emotional stress? That is there for every relationship in this world. Brother, sister, mother, father, husband, wife, any relationship. All right. So you must check the fourth house, the fourth lord. And then the next thing you must check is the fifth house and the fifth law. You must, 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 must check this. Why? Because the fifth house, the fifth lord will tell you uh, to what extent does the person has a zeal in life. Because if you remember, I had made a video on the fifth house. If you have not watched it, then please go and watch. I said in that video that uh, the fifth house, fifth lord, and associations with the fifth house, these things will tell you to what extent. Uh, what is the reason that you get up in, in the morning? So therefore, uh, they say fifth house is the house of motivation. Why? 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 Because motivation is something which gears you up in life. So um, if a person doesn't have a good fifth house or the fifth lord is badly placed, then it can happen that the person lacks motivation in life. So then he or she will also lack motivation to maintain the marriage. Yes, he or she will lack that. All right. So therefore... You must check the fifth house. The fifth house will tell you to what extent does he or she want you. Yes, because that's the house of love basically. And then 
you see these are the things which you must check okay and now you may be thinking oh what about seventh house venus and all this well that's the last thing you should check then you check venus you check seventh house seventh lord these are the things you check and most importantly this is huge this is the last but this should have been number one it's my mistake the most important thing to do before marriage compatibility is to check all these factors in not the other person's horoscope, in your same horoscope, in your own horoscope. Because if these factors are not good, then it doesn't mean you marry the most beautiful lady, the most intelligent man or the most handsome man or the most rich man or the most richest lady. It doesn't matter. You will be miserable. All right? So, therefore, first check these factors in your horoscope. Then you check these in that person's horoscope. And only then you should go for compatibility. Not just that you are doing some fancy gun milan, 36 or oh, 15 out of 36. Marriage is cancelled. Marriage is bad. No, it's not like that. Right? You must check these factors before doing compatibility matching in your and in that person's horoscope. So, now, the question is, what if maybe the other person is having these things and you are not having then what will happen is uh, irrespective of whatever that person does you will not be able to feel happy because you are not happy with yourself basically these factors are not good okay so and now if you are having these factors well good factors and if that person doesn't have then what will happen then you will be doing things from yourself but that person will always feel that you are not doing you are lacking in some area that person will complain you know, play games with you so so then you have to really decide should you go ahead with this person or not okay for marriage because marriage is a very big decision so therefore uh, please uh, please ensure that you check these factors before you go for compatibility matching before you go for all this fancy stuff, you know, oh, my Venus is in Libra, her Venus is in Gemini, it's in trines, it is good. No, these are all piece of garbage actually. If these other factors are not good, I don't give a damn to where your Venus is and where her or his Venus is. It simply doesn't work. It's all crappy, useless garbage. <laughs> it won't work because that's what they are doing in the West. I see some uh, people, they come to me for consultations and they say that, oh, I'm in US and there, this astrologer, I'm uh, in London, this astrologer told me your Venus is in trines to each other, you'll have a great sex life. Wow, that's not prostitution. Marriage is not prostitution, that you're just having sex 24 hours. For God's sake, I don't know what is their conception of marriage. So then if you're seeing, oh, Venus is in uh, Taurus, his, uh, and then her Venus is in... Scorpio, it's seven houses apart. Great, fantastic. Wow, you are heading in for a disaster. Okay, so please check these points before you check your Venus compatibility. Before you check Mars, you check your moon sign compatibility. All these things will matter least because these factors are like the foundation of the horoscope. If the foundation is only weak, if your or his or her foundation is weak, then it doesn't make sense to do compatibility matching, all right? So even if there is compatibility, compatibility is only 10 to 20% I have seen in my experience. I have seen the worst compatibility mat matching couple staying together because their individual horoscopes in these factors are very good. And I have seen the other way around also. Crappy horoscopes and very good compatibility, sometimes up to 25 or 28 also I have seen. They have ruined their lives. They have ruined their lives, their families, their children, their parents, everything they have ruined. Why? Because these factors which I told you, they will tell you to what extent can you be happy yourself without the partner. Because remember, if you are happy when you are single, you will also be happy when you are in a relationship. There could be fluctuations, of course. But if you are not happy when you are single, if you are crying, you are miserable, you are empty and you feel that you need somebody, then you will never be happy in any marriage, any relationship with any number of people. You may dance and hop from partners to partners like dogs and animals and cats and monkeys. It won't make you happy. All right. So the question is, what should you do if these factors are not good? All right. So therefore, uh, you must change certain mantras. So for 
ascendant you can chant uh, this mantra shri shri ram jay ram jay jay ram shri ram jay ram jay jay ram 108 times every day morning for fourth house you can chant om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 108 times every day morning and for the fifth house you can chant om namo bhagavate shri vamanaya all right so if you chant these three mantras uh, then uh, hopefully with sincerity and with dedication and with prayers then your own horoscope will improve and you will be able to be happy by doing things which you like not not dependent on happiness from somebody else that will ruin your relationships all right so never be dependent for your own happiness to somebody relationship doesn't mean you lack something and somebody lacks uh, somebody comes and fills it no if you have a filthy empty boring disgusting lifestyle no 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 num any number of people you take they cannot come and fulfill that in you it is simply not possible it doesn't work like that and if you are happy yourself within yourself doing things that you like doing things that you value then what happens then when some other person comes then uh, you share your happiness with them and only then your relationships are good only then you become happier in a relationship otherwise if you are if you are miserable uh, without a partner when you get a partner then what happens you share your misery so that person becomes more miserable mm -hmm. and then your relationship ends because you feel that i was happier when i was single uh, or maybe that person will end the relationship because that person's uh, happiness equation is going down because you are ending up giving them so much misery all right so if your life is not good if you are unhappy then please don't uh, think that getting married will solve your issues all right so first sort your own life have a good have a good lifestyle have a regulated lifestyle eat good sleep sleep on time do the right activities Re read scriptures like the bhagavad gita then you will have more clear vision of life if you are just roaming headlessly doing things anywhere any time with anybody then you are just simply living like animals and dog cats and dogs so then no partner can come and satisfy you temporarily there may be some passion and sexual attraction and attachment but then later on you will end up in a disaster all right so do not end up in disaster don't start disasters <laughs> All right so elevate your consciousness read scriptures like the bhagavad gita and understand that uh, the way krishna had helped arjuna because arjuna was feeling bit helpless all right so so therefore if you read uh, then you will understand that the way arjuna got direction in life similarly i also need direction in life okay therefore don't waste your time doing unnecessary things read the bhagavad gita and only then you can be happy in life so i would end by saying another shloka from here this is a sixth chapter 18th verse okay yukta hara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapna va bodhasya yogo bhavati dukha he who is regulated in his habits of eating sleeping recreation and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system wow beautiful one of the most beautiful shlokas he who is regulated in habits of eating sleeping recreation and work all right can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system so there you go krishna has answered how to mitigate pangs of material nature by being regulated in these four activities right and if you are not regulated in these and then if you think then what will happen you meet somebody you will become more uh, unregulated and you will become more disorganized and then your misery increases all right so therefore uh, Im improve your consciousness read scriptures like the bhagavad gita chant the mantras that i have given and only then you should do marriage compatibility or relationship compatibility uh, instead of wasting time seeing things like where 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 are our moon signs are they in trines they are in kindras to each other they are in dusthanas to each other or seeing venus or trying to behave like somebody in the porn industry or oh like it simply doesn't work all right thank you very much and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him